Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, my Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone be to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority. For it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you, then, will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil has finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, allow us open minds and open hearts that we may receive your message this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure which one is the, uh, the bigger challenge because most of you have endured me being up here during one of my morning messages. So I don't know which one's the bigger challenge to prepare a message to you and deliver it to you or to read another pastor's sermon because you want to emphasize certain points in anything that you do or, or speak. So I hope I do Pastor Frank well this morning by reading his sermon to you. If you had to spend two nights in the woods in weather like we've been having lately, what would you take to get ready? If I said we would be leaving tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to head toward the wilderness, would you be good to go? I begin this morning with a story out of California. Perhaps you've heard about this on the national news this past week. According to news reports, a pair of California sisters, ages five and eight, wandered lost for 44 hours in the woods after hiking away from home and getting lost last weekend. Leah, eight, and five-year-old Caroline, Carico, were found safe in a wooded area just 1.4 miles from their family's home in California around 10.30 last Sunday after getting lost. The girls had a shocking story to share after surviving in the woods alone for nearly two days as temperatures dropped down to 38 degrees at nightfall. The girls took off into the woods on Friday afternoon after asking their mother, Misty Carico, if they could go on a hike. Misty said no but was busy at the time and did not realize the children were gone until about a half an hour later. Lee and Caroline said that they had been following a deer trail when they got lost and decided to stay put. Leah wanted a little adventure, but I wanted more, the younger Caroline told the host of Good Morning America last week. So they remained in the forest drinking fresh water from leaves and using Caroline's rain jacket for shelter. They cuddled together as the temperature dropped 
And Leah did not did all she could to calm her little sister and keep her safe. Meanwhile, the girl's parents reported them missing and a massive search for the children ensued. More than 250 law enforcement and military personnel helped in a large search and rescue operation. The sheriff's office said Saturday that crews were following a trail of granola bar wrappers found in the woods after the girl's mother confirmed she had recently bought the brand. I wasn't hopeful after the first night, said their mom. It was 38 degrees and pouring rain, much like we've had here. I constantly heard my kids screaming for help in my head and I felt awful terrified and guilty. Ultimately, it was the kids' boot prints that led rescuers in their direction. They were eventually reunited with their parents on Sunday morning. When asked how they survived for two days in the wilderness alone, Leah said, we go on camping trips a lot each summer. And I knew how to start a fire because I watched this show, Tropical Paradise. Photos of the emotional reunion showed Misty and their father, Travis Carrico, embracing the girls. I was so worried about you, Travis told Caroline, adding, you're in so much trouble. Their mother, Misty, said, there will be no punishment for her daughters. They saved each other. I'm the proud mom. I raised superheroes. This amazing story raises a question for us this morning. Would we be prepared for time in the wilderness like Leah and Caroline? Are we good to go? This Sunday marks our entry into the season of Lent, where we head into a wilderness of sorts as we follow Jesus into the desert for 40 days. The Bible tells us that the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days where he had to survive on his own without adequate food or shelter. Most of us probably don't think of Jesus as the brawny, muscular, super masculine type like survivalists we see on TV, guys like Bear Grylls. But the story of Jesus in the wilderness challenges views of Jesus being a wimpy person, a wallflower, or even a weakling. It took real strength for Jesus to endure and survive in the wilderness. Real wilderness survival skills. But the biggest challenge Jesus faced in the wilderness was not the harshness of nature. His biggest challenge came at the end of his time in the wilderness when he was visited by the devil. The great tempter laid three challenges down in front of Jesus that would have rewritten human history if Jesus had failed them. Like on the television show Survivor, the devil sets up three tests. The first test is a physical test. The devil offers the now famous Jesus a loaf of bread. Finally, something to eat. But Jesus says humanity cannot live by bread alone. The second test is a test of Jesus' values. The devil offers the Jesus worldly power and all the things of the world to which Jesus says worship the Lord your God and only served him. And the third test is a spiritual test that involves a challenge to Jesus' knowledge of the Bible. This is the most interesting test because in this test, the devil seems to know the Bible. He apparently understood it and quoted it back to Jesus as part of a spiritual challenge. Fortunately, Jesus knew his scripture better than the devil. Jesus responds to the final challenge with, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus passed these tests in flying colors, and the Bible says the devil departed from him 
until an opportune time. The two girls from California I spoke of earlier survived the wilderness because they had done a lot of camping. They knew how to build a fire and had watched enough survivalist television to know what to do and know how to survive. Jesus survived in the wilderness because he knew who he was and he knew the scripture better than the devil himself. All survived because they were to go before, they were good to go before they headed into the wilderness. As Christians, we live in a world that is more and more becoming a wilderness territory. So true. A place of tremendous risk where we are daily faced with challenges that test us. Some of our tests are physical. As we confront poverty, sickness, injury, or even emotional distress. Some of our tests confront our values, challenging the things that we feel are most important in our lives. Some of our tests are spiritual, as we confront doubt and despair within our own hearts or the hearts of others around us. Any one of these tests can overwhelm us and threaten our very survival. But they lose their power to defeat us if we are good to go before we meet them. This just doesn't happen. We aren't good to go just by sitting around wishing for someone to prepare us. We make ourselves good to go when we do two things. First, we make ourselves good to go when we, like Jesus, remember who we are. Do you remember the movie Lion King? It powerfully illustrates this truth. Anyone who watches this story will have their hearts touched by the death of Mufasa, the Lion King at the opening of the movie. But our attention is drawn away from that tragic event to the loss experienced by Simba, Mufasa's son, the future Lion King. In losing his father, Simba loses himself. He loses his sense of security and ultimately his identity. So Simba runs away from Pride Rock, his home, to leave his loss behind so he may embrace Hakuna Matata, a life with no worries. In doing so, Simba makes the choice to live small in order to hide his identity. He does this thinking his birthright isn't important or even critical to his survival or the survival of others in the line pride. Simba's choice to walk away from his identity, in fact, puts him and the entire pride at serious risk. By running away, Simba forgot who he was born to be. In amazement in the movie, Simba's father, Mufasa, comes to him in a dream and says, you are my son, the one true king. You are more than what you have become. This visitation awakens in Simba a recovery of his identity and finally makes Simba good to go, ready to be the rightful new Lion King. As we face challenges in our lives, our choices to live less than God created us to be, to live in fear, anger, unforgiveness, or any deflection of God's given identity, this has significant short-term and long-term consequences for us and those around us. If we, if allowed to go unchecked, such loss of identity can actually threaten our lives, or at least the quality of our lives. It is therefore critical that we as Christians remember who we are, and more importantly, whose we are in Christ Jesus each time we set foot in the wilderness of the world. 
God permits unfor unfortunate circumstances in our lives intended to deepen our trust in him and our communion with him. But we must claim our precious identity as his children in order to face and overcome the challenges that we would throw lesser people. And we must do one more thing. We are good to go and meet the challenges of today if we, like Jesus, carry in our hearts the word of God. True words, the word of God. The message we receive by grace through the Bible. This book is not just a bunch of dusty old stories about a bunch of ancient people with weird names from places we never heard of. It is not a rule book filled with guilt-inducing proclamations designed to condemn everything we consider fun and attractive. It is not a pre-scientific artifact that is no longer relevant in this rationalist world that only respects data, clinical certainty, and other things we count and put in a bank. And it is not a science book that explains in literal detail everything we need to know about the physical world around us. Contrary to what some believe, it does not compete with science, math, law, technology, philosophy, or any other human discovered wonders. It possesses an integrity all its own that none of these other highly esteemed human works can claim. This is the word of God, simply put, inspired by the Holy Spirit, written by human witnesses to tell us something about a God who is bigger than our wilderness, a God who made us and the wilderness. It tells of a God who sees us when we fall, who truly feels our pain, and decides to do something with our pain in order to give us a better chance. This book tells us about a God who came into this world to redeem us, setting us up to survive so we can begin again and again and again. Simply put, this is a roadmap for those of us stumbling in the wilderness, looking for some direction and a way back home. It is not perfect as God is perfect, but it is true and it is sufficient to make us good to go. It is the one tool we have to prepare us for a walk in the wilderness. As I said earlier, we stand today at the edge of a new season in our Christian life and as a church, there are plenty of challenges and risks facing us individually and as a body. Some, some among us may be so full of fear that we feel we cannot and will not survive our personal wilderness. We may say, I'm not good to go. But by Christ's example, we have been shown what to do to overcome this feeling by the remembrance of who we are and whose we are and by our daily use of the word of God, we have enough to step toward any and all challenges. The devil may still be in the details, challenging us, threatening us, shaking our cages every step of the way, but we are good to go. If we stand in Christ's truth as children of God and echo the words of the 119th Psalm. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Jesus inviting each of us to follow him to the wilderness this morning. He knows you have been informed who you are. And he knows the word of God has been freely shared with you. So he asks you, 
Are you going with us? Are you good to go? In Christ's name, amen.